what's up beautiful people how are y'all doing today i hope y'all are amazing and just blessed and walking in the joy and peace that god wants you to walk in honestly like i hope life for y'all is like amazing and that you're just growing spiritually and that you're just happy but oh god i hate this chair so much y'all i'm gonna tell y'all something i filmed this video but honestly like i'm so spontaneous i don't like planning anything so like i filmed this whole video already but I looked so thrilled and the background was bad and the lighting was terrible. Like, I might insert a clip just so y'all can see. Like, and I was trying to edit it and I was just like, no. No. Today I'm going to be doing a video on um, how to live for Jesus as a teenager. I'm about to do this. Are you done? Please like and subscribe to my video so I can buy a new chair, please. I thought to do this video because... I remember um, as a teenager, like thinking, like, bro, like I really want to do this thing. I really want to be Christian. I want to do it like for real and like live it out the right way. And I just want to do it for real. And I didn't know how. And I didn't know if it was possible. Um, so that's what like made me want to make this video because I know there's other teenagers out there who really want to live this thing out and just do it for real. Um, I'm not a teenager no more. I wish I was still a teenager. So if you're a teenager, please slow down and just enjoy it. Seriously, like, listen, seriously. But I'm not a teenager no more. And when I was a teenager, I needed a video like this pretty much, okay? I needed this video. I'ma just leave it at that because I was on some other stuff. So yeah, let's just go ahead and get into the video. I'm just gonna be giving y'all a few uh i guess tips or ways to like uh just try and stay on track and like really live for jesus um yeah So, the first um, tip or whatever that I would give you all is to not expect yourself to be perfect. We as Christians, we are not perfect. We're actually the opposite. We realize that we aren't perfect, which is why we need Jesus, because we are hot mess and we need him. So, if you slip up or mess up or sin, yes, it's bad, but it's not the end of the world. You're saved now. You're a Christian. You're safe. You're you're good. All you have to do is come to your dad and be like, Jesus, I realized what I did was wrong. Please forgive me. Apologize from a sincere place, and you're good. Like Jesus is not still holding that over your head. He's not a human. He's not gonna be mad at you. You're good. So the first tip that I would give when it comes to like being a Christian and being a teenager is don't get into condemnation. Like I remember. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna, gonna be Christian for real. I'm about to do this thing. You know what I'm saying? And then, like, I be flirting with one of them little girls. That's a whole nother video. And I was like, it's too late for me. I'm going to hell. It's over. This is it. God's mad at me because I keep liking this, this person. And yeah, which is not true. So yeah, that's the first tip. If you sin, do not beat yourself up over it. It's okay to feel convicted. It's not okay to feel condemned. Condemnation is a lie. If you are saved and you feel like the world is coming to an end because you messed up, just ignore those thoughts and be like, read your Bible so you remember the truth. Which leads me to my next point. The second tip that I would give for walking this thing out for real as a teenager is definitely reading your Bible. Listen to me. When I started reading my Bible as a teenager, I realized that there was a lot of things that people was telling me that was not true and that did not line up with the Bible. Basically, when you start reading your Bible for yourself, you like you see the truth about everything. Like when I read my Bible for myself, there was a lot of things that weren't taught to me. Like specifically grace. 
Um, I learned about grace through reading the Bible myself. Um, it wasn't really taught to me um, until like after I started reading the Bible myself. Um, and there was also things where I was like, you know, I was questioning at uh, some of my old churches because it was like, that, that doesn't match what the Bible is saying, you know what I'm saying? So definitely read your Bible so that you know the truth because it's a lot going on in the, in the world and especially nowadays everybody is switching the truth with a lot and you need to know the truth for yourself so definitely 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 read the bible even when going to your going to church like make sure you read the bible for yourself one thing i love about my church is my pastor he really pushed for us to read our bible like every year we read the bible through the whole Bible. We do a corporate plan together, reading the Bible. Like, and that has really like changed my life and helped me in God's relationship. And the next tip that I would give when it comes to um, like doing this thing for as a teenager, um, I would say definitely like spending time with God. And let me explain what that means because when I was younger, I didn't really understand what that meant. Some of you may be thinking like, how do you spend time with an invisible God? So some ways that you can spend time with God is um, reading your Bible, like I said, uh, praying. And when you pray, like, okay, so you can pray for like certain things that you want God to do. Also, you can just talk to God. But when you talk to God, give him a chance to speak back. Like when you say how you feel, like sit in silence for at least five to 10 minutes. Like just sit there in silence and just wait and listen. And like God will speak to you. Yeah, that's just something that you have to learn for yourself, like, but don't overthink it. Like, literally, just, like, like, just be quiet and, like, just listen. Also, ways that you can spend time with God is worshiping. Um, like, listen to a song. Like, um, for instance, just find a song on YouTube that you like. Uh, I like Upper Room's music. Like, they got some good music. I love Upper Room so much. Just listen to their music, sing along with it. Like, allow the words to actually mean something to you. Sing some of your favorite worship songs. Even if you don't sing it, like, with a song on YouTube, just sing, like, without music. Like, sing. Just sing to God. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. That's how you spend time with Him. Because even while you're singing to God, it's like you're, you're kind of unintentionally reminding yourself of His goodness and who He is. So, yeah, definitely do that. Another tip that I would give, be okay with being different. If you grew up in the church, or even if you're just saved now, like, you're automatically different. Like, you're just different. You're not like anybody else. And I'm pretty sure you notice that. That doesn't make you better than anybody, but you're, you're different. Like, you're set apart, literally. I remember back in high school, like, I would get the worst punishments. Like, I would get, like, suspended for, like, the smallest stuff. Like... I would get the worst consequences for doing the smallest things and I didn't understand and it's literally because I knew better like I knew better like I'm going to church every Sunday paying attention to what's being taught to me like I know the truth so I was held accountable for the truth you know what I'm saying so I'm pretty sure you notice that if you like one of those bad kids like I was like you notice like that any little thing you do, you get punished for. It's because you're set apart. You know the truth. You're not like everybody. You can't do what everybody else does. Sorry. Not sorry. You're a king's kid. You're held at another standard. That's just like being Barack Obama's daughter. Like, she, she is expected to be perfect. Kind of. But I don't know. I don't even see how that's tied in. But whatever. Another way that you can stay on track as a teenager is having accountability. Uh, there you go. So with accountability, you really just got to pray about who to talk to because there's so many people um, in in the church that are one way at church and are different at home. And I'm pretty sure y'all know that because some of your parents are like that. Pretty much you just pray to God about who to talk to. And it's, honestly, it's probably not going to be like anyone popular in the church and it's probably not going to be someone that you're comfortable with. Like, it's, like, when you pray about it, it's probably going to be someone that you don't really know like that. It might be someone that's, like, older than you. But 
one thing that I can say for sure is once you pray about who that person is and once God reveals it to you, like you might just see an image of them in your head. Like you probably never really paid attention to them, but you prayed about it and this is the person that came to your mind. One thing I can say is that person will like definitely hold you accountable and tell you the truth and love and that's what you want. Like you want somebody to be like you're wrong in this situation. Go back and apologize. You knew you weren't supposed to be doing that. Or, okay, don't beat yourself over it just because you fell into sin. Let's get you out of this sin. Let me pray with you. You know, stuff like that. So, definitely accountability. And with accountability, just make sure that you're completely honest. Like, if you sin, do not wait to tell them. Like, if you sin, tell them immediately. Or tell them when you start thinking about it. Like, come to them like, hey, listen, I'm thinking about watching a little porn. I need you to pray with me. I'm telling you because I don't want to do this. So just make sure you go to them and you're um, honest and yeah. Oh, also, choose your friends wisely, which I understand can seem difficult, but give me a second, let me explain. Your friends don't have to be, your friends don't all have to be Christians, but there's people who aren't Christians that still have like good morals. It's just very true that you are who you hang around. So just make sure that um you just ask god to like give you some good friends to be around and some good people to be around like for me i've always hung out with people who are older than me because i was just in some ways like just a little more mature so i've always hung out with people who are older than me and yeah you might end up having to hang out with someone who's older than you i mean you never know hang around some people who won't keep pulling you into sin that's what i'm looking for Hang around people who won't have you always in a cycle of sin that you keep trying to get out of, pretty much. I think that's all that I can think of right now. If not, Holy Spirit, bring it to me. Yeah, I think I said it all, but I do want to add this. These things that I've given you are very, 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 very important. And especially nowadays, especially reading your Bible for yourself. If you don't understand what something is saying, pray, say, God, give me grace to understand this. Jesus, please help me understand what this verse is saying. What does this mean to me? Pray. If you don't answer right away, give him some time. Don't be rushing Jesus. Relax. He's going to tell you. It's okay. At church, they might be preaching on that scripture and you're like, oh, he'll explain it to you pretty much, you know? Um, and yeah, it is very, very, very important to read your Bible, to pray, to worship and to have accountability uh definitely connect to a church i feel like that goes without saying but yeah you definitely need to be in church and if that is a video that i need to drop please comment down below because church is important do not let nobody tell you that it's not it is um but these things are important because especially nowadays there's a lot of people um and especially teenagers saying that they're christian but they're like into crystals or um, they're like taking certain parts out and like twisting a lot of things around and we can't do that you know what I'm saying like yeah you just don't do that like you follow the Bible and all of what it says you don't just choose the parts that you want to follow you know what I'm saying you don't get to twist and turn the Bible how you want it to sound and how you want it to be no it's just very important that we read our Bible for ourselves, have our own relationship with God because things are getting sticky. And I don't I don't even say that to like be scary, to scare anybody or anything, but like, and I really hate to be this person because I remember being a teenager and like being all scared because people said this, but we're in the last days. And there's nothing to be worried about. God is going to take care of you. Like the fact that you came across this video means that God wants you to see this video and he wanted to see you be clear instructions on how to stay on track. God is not going to let you get off track, which is why he brought this video to you. But, like I said, it is very important for you to have your own relationship with God because people are really, like, twisting the Bible and twisting the truth. And, like, yeah, you're going to have to know the truth and you're going to have to know for sure that you believe in what you say you believe in. So, yeah. That being said, that's the end of the motherfucking video. Y'all make sure y'all motherfucking like, comment, and subscribe. And yeah, if y'all have any questions or anything, comment it down below or 
uh, DM me on Instagram and yeah love y'all stay blessed remember that you set apart your child of god everything that you need god has so you don't have to worry or stress about anything just pray and ask your daddy and you good like comment and subscribe bye